subject of debate, but the unorthodox alliance of a scandal-prone Texas congressman and an out-of-favor CIA operative that gave birth to the Afghan jihad kept this history under the radar. It is the missing chapter in the politics of our time, a rousing good story that is also a cautionary tale. Introduction A Strange Award at Langley the entrance to CIA headquarters is just off the George Washington Memorial Parkway, about a ten-minute drive up the Potomac from the White House. On a sunny, humid day in June 1993, an air-conditioned bus exited the parkway onto Dolly Madison Boulevard and slowed down at the turnoff to the Langley headquarters. A bouquet of flowers had been left on the grassy island in the intersection. Each day now, someone had taken to leaving a fresh floral arrangement here to mark the spot where three months earlier... A young Pakistani with an AK-47 had calmly gunned down two agency officials and made his escape. It had never been easy for outsiders to get into the CIA's sprawling wooded compound, not even before the assassinations. The day the innocuous-looking bus pulled up to the security gate was some three years after the Berlin Wall had come down and a year and a half since the Soviet Union had ceased to exist. But although the Cold War was over, the CIA, that 46-year-old shrine to anti-communism, was very much intact, and no one was talking about dismantling it. At the gate, the uniformed guards immediately recognized the bus and the driver. It was a CIA vehicle with an agency employee at the wheel, but the security men wanted to know who the others were. "'I'm Congressman Charlie Wilson, and they're fixing to give me an award in there.' the tall figure in a dark blue suit announced as the guards mounted the bus. The congressman's voice is a bit startling at first. Booming is the only way to describe it, a melodious large Texas baritone that carries with it a sense of authority and importance. None of the other men or women in the bus looked terribly important. Generally speaking, no one ever looks impressive in a bus. But after listening to the congressman, the guard called the director's office, and, without checking so much as a driver's license or searching any of the visitors' briefcases or handbags, waved the vehicle through the gate. The woods of Langley were particularly lush that morning. It was June 9, 1993, a week after Charlie Wilson's 60th birthday, which he had celebrated with a party for 300 at the Roof Terrace restaurant of the Kennedy Center. Casablanca was the theme he had chosen for the event— it was his favorite movie, and he had appeared for the occasion in a white dinner jacket specially tailored to look like the one Humphrey Bogart wore when he played the role of Rick. A big band played dance music from the 1940s and 50s, and a characteristically bizarre collection of guests gathered to pay tribute to the rule-breaking congressman from the Bible Belt of East Texas. Six feet, four inches tall, square-jawed, Hollywood handsome, he had taken to the dance floor with one woman after another to relive the memories of his outlandish exploits. No congressman or senator in anyone's memory had ever succeeded in flouting the rules so repeatedly for so many years and managed to survive. By this time, in the dull era of the 1990s, he had become the ultimate master of the Washington High Wire Act, and that night his many strange and unusual friends had stood back and marveled as Charlie danced the night away, offering a toast to friends, to power, to passion, to black lace, before exiting with Ziva, a beautiful Israeli ballerina on his arm. A week later, riding in the CIA bus to his rendezvous with history, Wilson was preparing himself to rise to the occasion. He looked remarkably fit and useful— there was not a trace of gray in his full head of hair. On this day, he actually had the look of a reliable, responsible, sober-minded man. The others in the bus, mostly Wilson's staff, began gawking out the window the moment they passed the security checkpoint. They were all staring at the sprawling secret compound, trying to lock in a memory of this forbidden zone that their champion was making it possible for them to see and experience. The well-kept jogging trails were still empty, they would be filling up in another two hours once the lunch break began. None of this was any longer novel for the Texan, but he still marveled at this center of tranquility where America plots so much of its espionage abroad. The CIA headquarters building is a somber cement structure that some still call modern.